Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special bonus episode of the Done With Dieting podcast. So as I'm recording this, it's Easter weekend, which means that sugar fest season is coming to an end. Sugar fest season is something that I learned from my sister years and years and years ago. And if you don't know what it is, don't worry. You're not alone. So sugar fest season is the six months that starts with Halloween and ends with Easter. During this time, sugar and candy are plentiful. They're all over the place. And it starts with Halloween candy, which, if we're being honest, that probably started in September and lasts well into November. And then in November, we have Thanksgiving, which then is the beginning of Christmas cookie season, right? And not only do we have Christmas cookies, but we have all of those amazing things that are seasonal to Christmas. And then that continues on. Like after Christmas, yeah, we have New Year's, but it's always fascinating to me how at New Year's, everyone starts these New Year's resolutions. And then these other companies come in and they're like, yeah, not too fast. We're going to give you dollar meals at McDonald's and Burger King and Pizza Hut. And then We're also going to give you Girl Scouts. So Girl Scout cookie season starts in like January. And so when you go anywhere, those little charming Girl Scouts are in front of the doors saying, hey, will you buy some cookies? And because we can only get them once a year, they become this novel thing that we have to do, right? Like all of these seasons, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Girl Scout cookies, Super Bowl, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, and Easter, we get special things at this time of year, but they're all pretty much the same thing, just repackaged or reshaped. So because of this, some of you may be experiencing some sugar cravings right now. Sugar has probably crept into your diet a little bit more than you probably liked it to be. And you're probably wondering at this point, like, after you eat any meal, like, is breakfast dessert a thing? Like, can I have a cookie after breakfast? Like, that's when you know that your sugar cravings are kind of out of control, right? Is when you start asking yourself, is it time for me to have, like, chocolate-covered almonds? And so if this is you, if you are thinking about Reese's peanut butter eggs or chocolate Easter bunnies, or Jordan almonds, or those beautiful pastel sugar cookies in the shape of chickens, eggs, or flowers, I want to invite you to join the Sugar Cravings Reset. Now, I think that when we hear Sugar Cravings Reset, which is a five-day challenge, it's synonymous with jump starts or doing something drastic that, of course, leads us to think about deprivation. Reducing your sugar intake does not have to be difficult. And to be honest, it can actually be somewhat painless. And this is how I know. So yesterday, I wrote an email to the folks who are on my email list about needing something sweet after dinner. And for years and years and years, I tried going cold turkey multiple times. I'd just like swear off eating the sugar after dinner. You're like, no, I'm not going to have it. I'm just going to grin and bear it. Or I'm going to distract myself. It doesn't work. At least it doesn't work as a lasting solution, which is why I went back to it over and over and over again. I would cut it out and then I would feel deprived. Because I was telling myself that I wasn't allowed, quote unquote, to eat the chocolate that I was craving, I was simultaneously feeling both an intense desire and resistance to eating it, which created this huge push-pull sensation in my brain and body. And that did not feel good. And so to avoid that feeling, of course I gave in and I ate the freaking chocolate. And to be honest, I probably ate more than if I had just allowed myself to have some. So. The push-pull was gone, but it was replaced with shame. And more often than not, it wasn't just the one chocolate square. 
Because once the gates are open, right, I ate it all, vowing to myself, I'll be good tomorrow, I promise. Where, quote unquote, be good is don't have any, right? Because we think that. We've been programmed to believe that we can't have any. But yet there's this part of ourselves, our brain, that we cognitively know, well, I should be able to have a cookie on occasion. Other people can do that, right? But yet when we do it, our inner critic shows up and tells us that it's not allowed. Our inner critic shows up because clearly I've proved that I can't be trusted around chocolate, right? And most of the women who are in the challenge really have no desire to give up sugar entirely, right? We don't want to give up sugar. We want to be able to eat cake when we're at weddings, for example, or share a dessert when we're out at a fancy dinner. We want to taste the flavors of the season. We want to have that special Halloween candy that we can only get at that time of year, not the Snickers that is just in a different colored package. We want to eat pumpkin pie or that special dessert that you can only get at Christmas. We want whatever it is, that coconut cake that you only make Easter, right? What we want to avoid are the unconscious handfuls of seasonally colored M&Ms. You know the ones that are black and orange at Halloween, red and green at Christmas, or pastel at this time of year. They're pretty, but they don't add a lot of value to our lives. They don't taste any different. And if we're being honest, I can get M&Ms year-round, and they taste exactly the same. When you join the Sugar Cravings Reset, I will teach you the tools, techniques, and mindset shifts that you need in order to change your relationship with sugar so that one, you don't crave it after each meal. Two, you don't run to it when you get that 3 p.m. energy low. Three, eat it when you want it and not eat it when it's unimportant, right? Like those unconscious candies that we're eating. And four, you can have some and feel satisfied. Those are the things that I'm going to teach you in the Sugar Cravings Reset. During the reset, you don't have to give up sugar entirely. Of course you can if you want, but it's not a requirement. And so if you want to be able to have sugar and not talk mean to yourself about it, you might want to learn how you can add sugar to your diet without having the inner critic pop up. So you can have sugar in your diet and still reduce your craving. So the Sugar Cravings Reset starts Monday, April 17th, and it's held at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Pacific. It's $30 to join. So it's super affordable. And you can certainly see the return on your investment if you're reducing your sugar intake. It'll definitely pay for itself. It's totally worth it. I've run the challenge a number of times, and you'll also be invited to participate in future challenges when I do them. I love doing it, and I've gotten such amazing feedback from those who have. Okay, so you might be wondering what the challenge is all about. So let me tell you, each of the five days, I'll present about 20 to 30 minutes on a topic that will help you to understand and take action towards reducing your sweet tooth. We'll approach this from a few different angles, cleaning up your environment. So yes, we are going to be discussing your kitchen makeover, but I'm not going to make you throw anything away. We're also going to tackle your sugar cravings as they become a habit. You'll start to observe when you're getting your sugar cravings and where you're getting your sugar from, like in what forms, and when your sugar cravings are the strongest as well. So you'll start to learn some of the tools that will help you to manage those cravings, especially in the early days when they're the strongest. I'll also share the mindset shifts that you can make to help alleviate the cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance is, for example, when we tell ourselves that we shouldn't have sugar because it's bad for us or that it'll make us gain weight or whatever rational thoughts you have about it. And 
that competes with the desire that, oh, that's going to be so tasty. Your desire for the brownie or the cookie or the chocolate or whatever it is in that moment. So we're really tackling this sugar thing from all angles. It's so super helpful and immersive. Doing the sugar cravings challenge right now is the perfect time to reset your cravings because it'll give you a break before we go into summer when we have all of those sugary drinks, right? Like pina coladas and things like that. It'll allow you to be more discerning with your treats that you choose and not say, F it, why bother? So now one other thing that you'll receive when you join the challenge is that you'll be invited to join a private Facebook group of amazing women who've already joined the challenge, who are just like you, who are just trying to reduce their sugar cravings. All of the calls will be recorded. So if you can't make it live, you'll still get all of the great information. Now, if you have questions, I'd love to connect with you on social, or you can email myself and my team at hello at elizabethsherman.com. I'd love for you to join me and the other amazing women who've joined the Sugar Cravings Reset. Again, we start Monday, April 17th, and it's held at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Pacific. And to sign up, go to elizabethsherman.com slash sugar. And of course, I'll put the link in the show notes. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon.